Hey y'all, it's Heel Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. My name is George Coles and this is a Heel Heat Top 10. The topic of this Top 10? Most iconic wrestling t-shirts. Now as fans, we all have some sort of wrestling merchandise, whether it be a t-shirt, whether it be a Funko Pop, a wrestling figure, an autograph. We're collectors too. We, get, we seem to buy stuff from the people we like. This is our list here of the 10 most iconic wrestling t-shirts. We'll start off right away with number 10. The DX original shirt, the uh, black shirt with the gray writing. It says uh, two words, suck it on the back. DX put out a lot of great shirts, but to me, this is the one that stands out the most. This is the one I think of when I think of DX. Now our number nine. I wish, it, in my own personal opinion, I think this would be further up the list because it's one of the one shirts I love the most. But we're talking about overall impact and overall iconicness of a shirt. And it slacks a little bit in that area. And that's the ECF&W shirt. If you're not familiar with this, it's from the promotion ECW. And it's basically block lettering, say, ECFNW. And on the back it would say, of course you know this means war. It embodies the ECW attitude, the ECW ethos. We're different. We don't give a shit what you think. We're going to put ECFNW on our shirt. We're going to put curses on our shirt. We're going to declare war on our shirt. And it's, it's an iconic shirt. It's the one mostly tied to the prom promotion. And it's one that you can still see in wrestling crowds to this day, almost 20 years after the promotion shut down. Now our number eight is from a guy that's been in the news a lot lately, whether it be in his upcoming UFC fight or his, his court case against the WWE's doctor, Dr. Amon, and that is the CM Punk Best in the World shirt. It's the white shirt, it's a ringer tee, has a Chicago, like almost a Chicago flag logo on the front with CM Punk's fist. This is the iconic shirt from his run from Money in the Bank 2011 and on. It's the one we most think of when we think of punk. And what I think of when I think of one of the best angles of the last 10 years, definitely that angle covers that. It's one of the best angles of the last 10 years, and it's one of the things that kept me watching wrestling in a real period where a lot of people wanted to turn wrestling off. Number number... Our number seven shirt. It's an iconic shirt for an iconic wrestler. And that's Rowdy Roddy Piper. The iconic Hot Rod shirt. And kind of like Lightning Bolt Flame kind of combination. It's one he wore through his whole career. Whether it was in WCW, WWF, WWE, TNA. Wherever he went, he carried the shirt with him. There were some alterations of it. Some different versions that said different things. But everybody remembers Piper, and you remember him with the Hot Rod t-shirt on. Now number six. Much like I said with the last couple guys, we have another iconic t-shirt, and that's Cactus Jack. Now there's two variations. Actually, there's several now, but two main variations of this. There's the one in dead Cactus Jack one, which is an old-style, like, uh, Western movies poster saying that one in dead Cactus Jack. And then there's the WWE version, which is Wanted Dead or Alive Cactus Jack. I'm partial to the original Wanted Dead because there's a subtle meaning behind it. This guy is so dangerous that we, want to, we don't even want you to try and capture him. We want you to kill him on sight. Bring him in dead. So there was a kind of a, a subtle nod to how dangerous Cactus Jack is. And that's what I like about that. The, just a little bit of a variation. They're both awesome. They're both cool. But, in my opinion, I like it better just one in dead. Now, our number five is a shirt that I've actually owned three different times. Now, all, most of these shirts I've owned at some point in my life. 
There's only one shirt on this whole list that I haven't, and I'll tell you what that is when we get to it. But our number five shirt is the purple Macho Man Randy Savage or Lavender. It's got the glasses that say Macho Man on them. They've redone it in different colors. It's green color. They, I've seen orange, yellow, red. But the iconic look is the lavender one, the one he wore in the 80s, kind of as a, a muscle shirt kind of deal. The one that they produced for the last 20 years. I had the t-shirt when I was a kid. I had the t-shirt in my 20s. I bought it again. And in my 30s, I bought it again because the one from my 20s got to a point where it was not able to be worn anymore and I had to throw it out. But it's an iconic t-shirt. It's one of the coolest shirts of all time. Iconic shirt for an iconic wrestler. Now our number four is for some icons currently in the world of wrestling and that's the Bullet Club. The, the classic Bullet Club Bone Soldier logo. It's the shirt that really helped New Japan and the Bullet Club get a foothold in America. This is a shirt you can see if you turn on any wrestling show, no matter where it is, America, England, uh, Mexico, Canada, Japan, you're going to see a group of people in the crowd, a big amount of people in the crowd wearing a Bullet Club shirt or some variation of it. They're the different. Each individual person has their own spin on it. But this is a shirt that brought the Bullet Club into Hot Topic. It brought them into getting Funko Pops. It's iconic, and I don't think we realize now just how much of an impact this is making on the wrestling business and the landscape of wrestling and how much wrestling is changing. Once we get back five, ten years out, we're going to look back and go, wow, the Bullet Club really changed wrestling. And this is one of the reasons, is the, that iconic t-shirt. Now our number three, speaking of someone that changed wrestling, I don't think of anybody changed wrestling more than this guy. And that's Hawkamania Hulk Hogan. Now there's two different variations that are basically the same. One is a yellow shirt with the red writing and one is a red shirt with the yellow writing. And both of them say Hawkamania on it. What child of the 80s did not have this shirt? It's the quintessential shirt for Hulk Hogan. It's the shirt you think of when you think of the Hulkster. The red and yellow. The, the all-American muscles. The slamming Andre the Giant. The going up against King Kong Bundy. Even in his later years in TNA, he would wear a similar shirt, which is basically the same thing, just the fonts a little bit differently. But every kid in the 80s had this shirt. You either had a yellow one or a red one. Everybody had one. I even had one, and I didn't even like Hulk Hogan. But it was a cool shirt. Everybody had it. It was basically the only wrestling shirt you could buy for a long time on a mass market. Now our number two also involves the Hawkster Hulk Hogan. And much like I said with the original DX shirt, we're going to talk about the original black and white NWO shirt. I think this is an iconic shirt. Again, it sig signaled a changing of the guard in wrestling. Uh, it signaled a new style of wrestling, a new way to story tell. The NWO was probably one of the greatest angles in the history of wrestling, one of the greatest groups in the history of wrestling. Just a steamrolling phenomenon. And the shirt was one of the reasons why. Every kid in your high school had it. If you weren't high school age, every kid in your middle school had it. Every kid in your elementary school had it. If you were above that, everybody you worked with had the shirt. I remember back when this was out, there were people that didn't even watch wrestling that were wearing NWO shirts. The people that would make fun of me a year before the NWO that all of a sudden are watching Monday Nitro every week and loving the NWO and Too Sweet and then all that good stuff. So it changed the landscape, it changed the culture. Now before we get into our number one, we do a little thing here on the best of the rest, on the top ten, called the best of the rest. And basically it's stuff that was considered for the list but didn't quite make it. First up, the iconic Freebird shirt, the Bad Street USA. We know it, we love it, we've seen them wear it their whole careers. I thought it was a really cool shirt. Again, it's the quintessential Freebirds and this shirt. They go together like peanut butter and jelly. Oh, 
The second for our best of the rest, and these are in no particular order, is the Monday Night Jericho shirt. Now, Chris Jericho's had a ton of cool shirts over the years, much like the NWO has, much like the Bullet Club has, much like DX had. But to me, there was nothing cooler than the Monday Night Jericho shirt. And I, I just liked it the way the play on Monday Nitro. It was one of the first parody wrestling shirts, so it kind of stood out for that reason. And to see what he would go on and become after that, it kind of is a nice to look back and remember the Chris Jericho from WCW. Last but not least on the best of the rest, this is the one shirt on this entire list I never owned. And I'm about to rectify it because it just came back up on Pro Wrestling Tees. Now, it's Greg the Hammer Valentine's I Broke Wahoo's Leg. Now, if you don't know what this is, it may be a little bit before your time. It's kind of a little bit before my time. It was right when I started watching wrestling that there was an angle where Greg Valentine broke Wahoo's leg. Wahoo McDaniel, that is. And he would wear a shirt. It was just a black shirt with white print writing, kind of like you would see any store or any, like, World's Greatest Dad t-shirt would have. And it would just said, I broke Wahoo's leg. Immensely cool. Uh, great shirt for a heel to wear said who he was, it bragged about what he did, and you knew right away he was the guy that broke Wahoo's leg. And that's what we have for the best of the rest. If you think I left something off this list completely, if you think I put a t-shirt up too high, one down too low, let me know what you think. Hit me down in the comments. Even if you like the list, if you think I'm dead right, hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion. Make sure you like, comment, and share on this. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. With all that being said, we're rolling into our number one t-shirt, the most iconic shirt in the history of wrestling, Austin 316. You had to know this was coming. If you listened to the list, you, it was a glaring omission. So this, this shirt in this moment, the Austin 316 King of the Ring moment, really solidified Stone Cold Steve Austin being the biggest star in professional wrestling, rising from a mid-card level to the top of the card. It was iconic, much like the NWO shirt, much like the DX shirt of that era. You would see this shirt all over the place. I believe, I remember hearing a report that there was at one point, out of every four t-shirts printed in America... One was a Steve Austin shirt, and that's just insane in my opinion. I mean, everybody had this. It was Steve Austin, the biggest star in the history of wrestling, most iconic shirt. What else can I say? Who doesn't love the Austin 316 shirt? But basically, that's all I have for this top 10. Again, please like, comment, and share. Tell me what you think. If I think I left something off, if you think I put something too high, too low... Leave it down here in the comments for me. But with all that, my name is George Coles, and this has been a Heel Heat Top 10.